Despite progress made by safety advocates and law enforcement, drunk driving still remains the number one cause of traffic deaths in the country, claiming roughly 10,000 lives and costing approximately $194 billion each year. There's no doubt that we've reduced uh, drunk driving deaths and fatalities in the past, but for the last 25 years or so, that progress has stalled. Drunk drivers cause 30% of our annual traffic fatalities. That's 10,000 lives a year. It's our number one safety problem and it's eminently preventable. Today, developments in vehicle technologies are helping us drive safer and smarter than ever before. Automakers are working with the federal government and leading states such as Maryland and Virginia to develop vehicle integrated technology that is able to measure a driver's blood alcohol concentration very rapidly with precision and accuracy and prevent the car from moving if the driver's over the legal limit. Believing that technology could help reduce drunk driving deaths, the federal government joined forces with the automotive industry to fund research into advancing the state of alcohol detection systems in vehicles. AXE is a collection of the leading automakers who are driven to make the cars and trucks that we drive ever safer. And we do that through uh, researching uh, advanced safety solutions and also how advanced technologies such as seat belts and airbags can help keep them safer. So we're working on two types of technology. One is a breath-based and one is a touch-based. And both of them actually work by detecting the alcohol concentration in the body. One through the breath and one through the tissue in the finger or anything that any surface that you would touch. And if uh, that alcohol concentration is above the legal limit in the United States, it'll prevent the vehicle from moving. The simplest way to explain the DADS program is that it's effectively taking a university chemistry lab, shrinking it down and putting it into the size of a smartphone, which then goes into your car, and then it must work flawlessly year in, year out for the next 20 years. Focused on preventing drunk driving deaths on a large scale, the technology has gone from a highly speculative concept to two proven systems. The technology is quite different from existing breathalyzers. Existing breathalyzers require a deep, long breath um, that you breathe into a plastic tube into the sensor. Um, our technology is quite different from that in that you don't require that deep, long breath. You're just breathing passively and the sensor will detect the presence of alcohol. There's no tube to get the sample into the sensor. Um, our sensors are much faster. Their speed of measurement is much faster in less than a second, uh, much more accurate, much more precise, and the goal is to have as reliable of a sensor as you can possibly have to implement inside of a vehicle. There's been quite a bit of challenges. Um, we've had to invent just about everything that we're working on, not only the sensors, but everything that's involved in calibrating and testing the sensors. This is a unique technology. This is not something that's off the shelf. Um, we've had to develop a mechanical lung that replicates how a human breathes exactly as they're breathing passively so that we are able to test our sensors against it. Uh, we've had to develop what we call phantom tissue that replicates what's inside the finger so that we can constantly test our technology and calibrate the technology. So it's been quite a bit of um, innovation invention over the past several years to get to the point that we're at today. As the first invention of its kind, Significant testing is underway to ensure the technology's accuracy, precision, and reliability. To ensure that our sensors are ready for consumers, they have to be tested under a variety of conditions, both in the environment, um, so we can think of altitude, temperature, humidity, um, inside of the vehicle, AC, windows up and down. But we also have to consider how humans are going to be in processing alcohol. Um, will they be eating and drinking? Um, what about smoking, um, physical activity? Essentially, we have to test every single condition that's possible out there. We're very excited about the progress we've made so far, but still more testing needs to be done. Consumers won't tolerate false positives or inconvenience, and this is why we do such extensive testing. We have a significant library of data that allows us to assess how the sensors are performing, but also make improvements so we can make the sensors smarter. After years of progress, the technology is moving out of the lab and onto the road. We want DADS to be the next seatbelt, used by all road users. And if we can do that, then we will effectively eliminate drunk driving and avoid 10,000 
deaths annually. We are on track to begin licensing the first product powered by dads, and that's a product that would intended for use by fleets who want to make sure that their drivers are alcohol-free when on the job. We've been working with the state of Virginia to conduct trial fleet deployments, which is developing a wealth of technical data that we're using to make our sensors ever better. Now more than ever, Americans understand the benefits of scientific research. When deployed effectively, innovations like these can both enhance and save lives. We do uh, our own consumer acceptance research, and that has consistently showed that over three quarters of the driving public think dads is a good idea that they want in their next new vehicle. I have uh, three young kids and uh, I can tell you this, I don't want them to be driving in a car that doesn't have our sensors. I want to make sure that you know, when they're 16, when they're 18, when they're 21 and able to drink, um, that they have that extra layer of safety. Uh, not that I don't trust their judgment, but everybody makes mistakes and you don't want it to be a mistake that you regret for the rest of your life. So it's that extra layer of safety that you will have in the future for everybody.